Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday after the fifth Sunday after the day of Pentecost. Um, the commemoration of Nathan Sudrablom, um, Archbishop of Uppsala and Ecumenist from All Saints Church in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Nathan Sudrablom, Archbishop of Uppsala, is regarded as one of the founders of the modern ecumenical movement. Born at Trune in Sweden on January 15, 1866, Sutterblom attended the University of Uppsala and was ordained a priest in the Lutheran Church of Sweden, um, or the Church of Sweden, which happens to be Lutheran, um, in 1893. From 1894 to 1901, he served as pastor of the Swedish Lutheran community in Paris, during which time he took his doctorate in theology at the Sorbonne, he returned to Uppsala in 1902 to teach and lead the School of Theology at the University. He was a highly respected scholar and teacher, a prolific writer, and an early proponent of the study of comparative religions. To the surprise and dismay of many, he was appointed Archbishop of Uppsala in 1914. It had been centuries since the senior bishops of the Swedish Church had been passed over for the appointment. And this was particularly notable since Sutterblom was not a bishop. He served as Archbishop of Uppsala until his death in Uppsala on July 12, 1931. Um, <clears throat> Sutterblom took a great interest in the early liturgical renewal movement among Roman Catholics, Anglicans, and Lutherans. This coincided with his deep commitment to the unity of the Churches of Christ and his passion for ecumenical advancement. In 1925, he invited Episcopal, Episcopalian Anglican Reformed Lutheran and Orthodox leaders to Stockholm, and together they formed the Universal Christian Council on Life and Work. Sutterblom worked closely with Charles Henry Brent um, at the first Conference on Faith and Order that Brent organized in 1927 in Lausanne, uh, Lausanne Switzerland. Because of his effort and his tireless advocacy of Christian unity, Sutterblom is numbered among the ecumenists whose efforts led eventually to the formation of the World Council of Churches in 1948. It was Sutterblom's advocacy for church unity um, as a means toward world peace that earned him the Nobel Peace Prize in 1930. Archbishop Sutterblom saw a profound connection between liturgical worship personal prayer, and social justice. A rich cohesion of these elements was, in his mind, the foundation of a Christian commitment well lived. Sutterblom died in Uppsala, Sweden, in 1931. <clears throat> Let us prepare for worship. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 28. O Lord, I call to you, my rock, do not be deaf to my cry, lest you do not hear, hear me, because I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my prayer when I cry out to you, when I lift up my hands to your holy of holies. Do not snatch me away from with the wicked or with the evildoers, who speak peaceably with their neighbors while strife is in their hearts. Repay them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their actions. According to the work of their hands, repay them, and give them their just deserts. They have no understanding of the Lord's doings, nor of the works of his hands. Therefore he will break them down and not build them up. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I have been helped. Therefore my heart dances for joy, and in my song I will praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance, shepherd them and carry them forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, verses 13 to 24. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own people jealous, and thus save some of them. For in their rejection is the reconciliation of the world. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And if the root is holy, then the branches are also also are holy. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in their place to share the rich root of the olive tree, do not boast over the branches. If you do boast, remember that it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. You will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand only through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe. For if God did not spare the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Note, then, the kindness of the severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness toward you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off, and even those of Israel, if they do not persist, if they do not persist in unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. For if you have been cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? Here ends the reading. <clears throat> this is... I read in this, um, first of all, an early um, injunction against Christians of non-Jewish origin belittling those Jews who aren't Christian. Um, Paul is pointing out to them that, you know, without without that base, without without um, that whole history of of the early Abrahamic faith which is still holy, um, Christianity couldn't exist. And their, their place in God's kingdom would have no foundation. Judaism is the foundation of Christianity. Whether you're a Christian Jew or a Christian Gentile. Not only that, but those those who have fallen away from their faith within within Judaism, whether whether it's Christian Jews or non-Christian Jews, um, they're not. God wants them back in the tree too, and and they have their place on the tree. It's not it's not that that. Um, those spots are filled, and, and, and now there are no spots. Um, but that God's, God's intent is to graft, not to prune. And it almost kind of points it off that, that th this isn't pruning. Because they're broken off. Pruning, pruning, pruning isn't done by breaking. That damages the vine. Um, so, the breaking off is not not necessarily what God is doing. But God is definitely cultivating and and um, grafting on to that to that basis 
that comes from the, the Abrahamic Jewish faith. <clears throat> the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Almighty God, we bless your name for the life and work of Nathan Sutterblom, Archbishop of Uppsala, who helped to inspire the modern liturgical revival and worked tirelessly for our cooperation among Christians. Inspire us by his example that we may ever strive for the renewal of your church in life and worship, for the glory of your name, who with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you, and I will see you online tomorrow morning. This has been Morning Prayer from All Saints Church in Washington Courthouse, Ohio, for the commemoration of um, Archbishop, um, Archbishop Nathan Sutterblom, um, from All Saints Church in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Thank you for joining us.